Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, was asked about whether or not Putin's ambitions extended beyond Ukraine, and his answer was almost shockingly stupid and deceitful. So Newsweek explains, Russian foreign minister Sergei Lavrov has said Russia has no intention of attacking other countries after talks with Ukrainian foreign minister Dmitry Kuleba reportedly made no progress on Thursday. Quote, we are not planning to attack other countries, Lavrov said during remarks delivered in Russian in Antalya, Turkey. We didn't attack Ukraine in the first place, the Russian foreign minister said. We just explained a lot of times that the situation has come, that there was a direct threat to the safety and security of the Russian Federation. Uh-huh. Sure. The thing that Russia is currently doing in Ukraine, which is definitely not an attack or an invasion, is purely defensive in measure. This is what every single imperialist invader will say. It'll always be the justification for their imperialist expansionist vision. Oh, well, we had to do this because it was defensive. Nobody believes you. Nobody believes you. And what's interesting is that while he says that we should not believe our lying eyes, Russia is actually intensifying attacks on civilians in Ukraine. As Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams explains, amid new reports Thursday of non-combatants killed and wounded by Russian attacks on Ukrainian civilian infrastructure, human rights advocates joined United Nations officials in expressing their horror and accusing Russia of possible war crimes. BBC reports three people, including a child, were killed and 17 others were injured Wednesday in a Russian airstrike on a maternity and children's hospital in the besieged southern port city of Maripol, with patients and staff trapped beneath the rubble caused by the attack. We don't understand how it's possible in modern life to bomb a children's hospital, Maripol Deputy Mayor Serhi Orlov told the BBC. People cannot believe that it's true. United Nations Children's Fund Executive Director Catherine Russell said she was horrified by the attack, which, if confirmed, underscores the horrific toll this war is exacting on Ukraine's children and families. In less than two weeks, at least 37 children have been killed and 50 injured, she continued. While more than 1 million children have fled Ukraine to neighboring countries. Now, I want to stress that that report has not been confirmed when it comes to reporting on wars. You really have to take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. Uh, but if you want just an approximation as to how bloody this war has been, well, the UN has some preliminary numbers and it's just jaw-dropping. So far, there's been more than 1,400 civilian casualties in the country, 516 killed and 908 injured. These included 98 men, 60 women, 9 boys, and 5 girls, as well as 23 children and 321 adults whose sex is yet unknown, 908 injured, 78 men, 57 women, 12 girls, and 4 boys, as well as 34 children and 723 adults whose sex is yet unknown. So, over a thousand civilian casualties, and that number will likely grow. And again, this number is an approximation, but just know that it's bloody. That's the takeaway. This is a very bloody war, as all wars are. And as Russia seemingly is getting more desperate, they're ramping up their attacks. And now they're doing war crimes, potentially. So, the foreign minister of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, is saying, we didn't attack Ukraine. What we're doing isn't a war or an invasion. It's a special military operation. You know, they'll, they'll coat their militarism and imperialism in Orwellian terms, but we know what this is. We see it for what it is. You can't lie to people in this era where everyone has a smartphone. Everyone has a camera on them. We can see the war now in high definition. So you can't gaslight us anymore. We see what's happening. This is an invasion. It's an act of aggression. It's an illegal war. And if it's proven that these are indeed war crimes being committed deliberately by the Russian government, then people need to be held accountable. I condemn U.S. imperialism, and I absolutely damn sure condemn Russian imperialism as well, especially as I see these reports pouring in about civilian casualties and them targeting civilian infrastructure. It's just, it's grotesque and unimaginable, and I, I really feel so bad for the people of Ukraine. Um, so, you know, this is what we're seeing currently. I'm sure there's going to be more reports. I hope that this war ends soon. I'm not necessarily that optimistic, given how we keep seeing reports about talks failing, but still, uh, I'm holding out some hope that this will end soon. But this comes down to Vladimir Putin. The onus is on him. He's the person who can choose to end this all right now. He can stop the blood, uh, the bloodshed and the suffering like that. 
but he's choosing not to. So the blood is on his hands. And the scary part is that he doesn't care. 